Hello, my name is Craig Ashapa, and I'm a technical marketing engineer with Cisco's data center product group. This video is part of a series that is intended to show some of the unique advantages made possible by Cisco's server offering called Unified Computing System, or UCS for short. This video will show the viewer the details of making iSCSI boot simple with UCS, utilizing service profiles, pools, and boot policies. Let's begin our demonstration for making iSCSI boot simple with UCS. Within UCS, there are multiple constructs available for making the iSCSI configuration simple. These include preset VLANs, pools, which include initiator IP pools and initiator IQN pools, LAN connectivity policies, and boot policies. Let's look through these constructs now. So on the LAN tab, I've created some dedicated iSCSI VLANs. On Fabric A, I've created iSCSI A VLAN 20. And on Fabric B, I've created iSCSI B VLAN 21. Going down to the policy section, under LAN connectivity policies, I've created an iSCSI Win 12 boot from SAN. This is where I go ahead and populate the vNix and the iSCSI vNix, which I can utilize later in my service profile. Here I've created three Ethernet vNix. Ethernet 0, which will be assigned to Fabric A for iSCSI A traffic. Ethernet 1, which will be assigned to Fabric B for iSCSI B traffic and Ethernet 2, which will be assigned to Fabric A or B from a general purpose LAN traffic. In the iSCSI VNIC section, I've created two iSCSI VNICs. iSCSI A, which is assigned the overlay VNIC name, Ethernet 0, which is right here. iSCSI B, which is assigned overlay VNIC Ethernet 1, which we created up here. Going down to the pool section, under IP pools, I've created two pools which, have, which are populated with IP addresses which will be assigned to the iSCSI initiators. On the A fabric, I have the Craig's iSCSI A, and on the B fabric, I have Craig's iSCSI B pools. The service profile will pull from these pools for its initiator IP addresses. So let's go to the SAN tab. I've created an IQN pool called Craig's iSCSI. This pool will be utilized for the IQN addresses of the initiators within the service profile. I have a prefix here. I've created a suffix of CA in the block size of 128. So there are 128 IQNs within this IQN pool, which will be utilized within service profiles. Going back to the server tab, within boot policies, I've created the iSCSI NetApp boot policy as my storage target in this instance will be a NetApp. And here I've populated this with a local CD, CD DVD, which will be there for my vMedia, an iSCSI A and iSCSI B, which we created within the LAN connectivity policy. Now that we've created the pools and policies, let's go ahead and put these to work. So over here on the servers, I've created an iSCSI sub-organization. I'm going to click on that. I'm going to click the Create Service Profile Expert. I'm going to give my service profile a name. I'll call it iSCSI Win12 Boot from SAN. The UID assignment will be from a pool. I'll hit Next. On the networking, now I could go ahead and create everything manually here. However, prior we created the LAN connectivity policy. So I'm going to use that within this service profile. All I do is click Use Connectivity Policy, click the down arrow, and choose the iSCSI Win12 Boot from SAN LAN Connectivity Policy that we created pre before. The initiator name will be a service profile level, level initiator name rather than an adapter. So everything within this service profile will utilize the same IQN. I'm going to pull this from the IQN pool we created before. I'm going to click Next. As this is iSCSI storage, I'm going to hit no VH VHBAs and click Next. I'm going to go down, scroll through these other sections, which I don't need at the moment, and go to server boot order. Now, for the, service, ser for the boot policy to use, again, I could create this manually right here and enter in all this information again for each service profile that I go ahead and create. However, we created a boot policy before, so let's go ahead and reutilize that. Let's choose the iSCSI NetApp boot policy. Once we do that, it populates 
the iSCSI VNICs that I've already created in here. I'm going to click on A. I'm going to set the set iSCSI boot parameters. Now at this point, I need to populate this with the target IP information and the initiator IP information. So for the initiator IP address, I could grab it using DHCP. I could statically set this, or I could use a domain pool, which we set up before. So I'm going to go ahead and, since this is the iSCSI A, I'm going to pull it from the IP pool for iSCSI A on the A fabric. Now I'm going to click plus. I'm going to create the iSCSI target name. This is the IQN of the storage target that we're going to be going up against. And I'm going to add the IP address of this. And click OK. Now I'm going to go ahead and do this for each one of my targets that I'm going to be utilizing within this service profile. So the IQN will, will remain the same. I'm going to go ahead and use a, another IP address for a different target on the storage system. And hit OK. Once I have that populated, I'll hit OK. And I'll do the same thing for my B fabric. Set iSCSI boot parameters. Set the IP address. Pulling from the B fabric pool. Hit plus. Add the I IQN name to the iSCSI target name. And then add the IP addresses for the individual targets on the storage system. I'll add one more. And click OK. Click OK. And then click Next. My server assignment. I'm going to assign it from an existing server. I could use a pool. Click Finish at this point as I'm done. It's going to show me the configuration of what I've already configured and click Yes. And then click OK. Now, if I click on the server service profile, I'll see that it's, that it's going through the configuration now. So rather than having to actually go into the BIOS and manually enter into the BIOS the target IQN and target IP addresses, initiator IPs, and these, these types of configurations, that's all being done through, UC, through UCS in the service profile. And it'll automatically populate the IBFT tables within the VIC virtual interface card of, of, UC, of UCS. If I expand my service profile, I'll see my iSCSI VNIX. Here's the initiator name, the IQN of the service profile. I will take this name, copy it, and put it into my storage target system to mask the iSCSI LUN to this particular initiator. Let's check on the status of our association of the service profile. So the overall status is okay, which means our service profile has associated to the hardware successfully. So at this point, I would KVM console into the blade, vMedia to my operating system, install the operating system. Once the operating system was installed, I'd go into my operating system and configure my multipathing software. So as we've seen, utilizing the pools, the LAN connectivity policies, and the boot policies has made configuring iSCSI on UCS very simple. To recap, configuring iSCSI boot can be a challenge in many environments, and Cisco UCS service profiles, pools, policies, and virtual interface card technologies help us by providing repeatable and consistent iSCSI boot capabilities. This ends this UCS Advantage video. 
where we show how unique capabilities in the Cisco UCS can lead to simplified deployment models with much faster service turnaround to meet the increasing demands of the business. Please go to www.cisco.com slash go slash UCS for printed collateral, including a brochure that highlights the information shown in this video. Thank you.